In this video, we will learn OCaml high order function fold. At the end of this video, you will be able to implement and use the fold function. We will also look at the type of the fold function and a few more examples. What is fold? Fold generally takes a function of two arguments, a list and the initial value, also called accumulator. Then it combines the list by applying the function to the accumulator and one element from the list and the result of recursively folding the function over the rest of the list. Usually, accumulator for addition is 0, for multiplication is 1. For the maximum minimum, it will be negative infinity or positive infinity. So what does that mean? Now let's look at the real uh, example. So in this example, fold takes a function. The function takes two arguments, two integers, and then adds them together. And zero as an accumulator, and then a list of one, two, three, four, five. So fold applies the function anonymous function to zero accumulator and the very first element from the list. Combine them, and then use this new value as a new accumulator and folds it to the remaining part of the list. That result is 50. That will be the sum of one, two, three, four, and five. So why do we need a fold? Before we look at fold implementation, now let's look at two uh, examples. The first example is a sum of a given integer list. So if we match the list, if the list is empty, we return zero. If the list is not empty, we split the list into head and tail and calculate the sum of the tail and add the head to that result. So if you use it, the sum of 1, 2, 3, 4 will be 10. Now let's look at another example. So we concatenate the uh, list of uh, strings. The same match case. If it's empty, now we return an empty string. If it's not empty, deconstruct to its head and tail, and then generate the concatenation of a tail, and then concat add the head at the front. That'll be, if we apply that to three strings A, B, C, then the result will be the concatenation of that A, B, C. So if you look at these two functions together, they look very, very similar. If the list is empty, we have that accumulator. The so accumulator can be different. Now, if the list is not empty, in the same case here, we split, and then we add the head, and some kind of processing, let's say this can be a function that process it, and then recursively fold on the tail. So now if you look, the only, the only different things are, uh, we can have a different accumulator, and then we can have a different function to process it. That'll be it. So if you put, uh, if you generalize this, then we have this fold that is fold takes a function and takes an accumulator and a list as arguments if the list is empty we return the accumulator if the list is not empty we split the list head and tail apply that function to the accumulator and the head for and use it as an accumulator for the next iteration and fold it over the tail. How do we implement fold? Just we looked at the previous slide. Fold takes a function, an accumulator, and a list as arguments. If the list is empty, it returns the accumulator. If the list is not empty, apply that function to the accumulator and one item from the list, the head of the list, and then use this value as an accumulator for the next iteration of fold and then uh, fold it until the list becomes empty. That's our fold function. Now let's look at the type of the function fold. Fold takes a function f, f takes two arguments, acc, the accumulator, and the head of the list. The accumulator could be any type, that is take a, and then one item from head of the list could be any other type that we say take A. And then because of this, um, the accumulator is a first argument 
of the function, then we also know the type of the accumulator must be tick A. And then also we know B is the head of the list, then from this we know uh, the list must be a tick B list. Now, whatever the F function generates, the output we will use it as the next iterations accumulator. That means this entire function should generate the exact same type as an accumulator. Now, this function, the return type eventually will be the accumulator itself. That means the return type also is a ticket. Type of higher order function fold. Fold takes three arguments. The first argument is a function. The type of function is it takes two arguments of tick A and type of tick B and returns the tick A. It also takes an accumulator of type tick A and it takes a list of tick B list and then eventually returns the type of tick A. So how to use fold? In this example, we create a function called ADD. It takes two integers and returns the sum of that two integers. And the fold takes add as a function argument takes zero as an accumulator and takes a list of two three four and it will return nine that will be the sum of two three and a four now let's look at an execution of fold so we have a function add it takes two integers and returns an integer we have a list of two three four and if, if we send add the accumulator zero and a list to the fold fold very first time takes a list and matches list right here and if this is empty it returns an accumulator but in this case it's not empty so it will split right the list to head and the tail and it will apply the function add to the accumulator zero and the head of the list two that is this case right here so this re new result will be two and then the next iteration right here it the two will become the accumulator so this time add takes accumulator two and the head of the list three is five and then the next iteration five will become the accumulator so now if you split the list into four and empty list apply add to the accumulator five and the head of the list is four that will be nine so in this last iteration, we have empty list as a list. So that matches this case. It will return nine, the sum of the list. Now let's look at some uh, examples of fold. The very first example calculates the product of an int list, just like the sum of a list. We have a function mul it takes two integers and it calculates a multiplication of two integers and then we have a list of lst and if you apply fold to the function mul and the accumulator one and the list we have the multiplication of one two three and four five that will be 120. definitely you should be careful the accumulator cannot be zero in this case otherwise the entire result will become uh, zero. So second example, you want to count the elements if the element uh, satisfies a condition. So we call this function count if and we will give a predicate and then list. So in this list, if each whatever the element it satisfies this predicate p and then we count that element. So we take fold, it takes a function, the function takes a counter, and the element so and then we apply the predicate to the element if this thing is true uh, we increment the counter otherwise a counter will stay the same and we send a zero as an accumulator and a list to the function fold to count if it's a predicate in this example if x is greater than zero if we send a list then all these elements that greater than zero will be counted, that is a uh, three. In this example, I will implement a filter function. That is, we collect all the elements that is uh, even number. So we create a function 
f <coughs> and then f takes an accumulator in the number if the number is divisible by 2 then we add that number to the accumulator otherwise accumulator will stay the same so we call full function is an empty list as an accumulator if we apply the function to this list take one element from the list at a time and then if that number is an even number it will be added to this list otherwise the list stays the same so at the end we will have the, all the, the even numbers and you should remember a fold will reverse the list okay. if you want to keep the numbers in original order uh, the entire result you can reverse uh, one more time next example that is uh, the inner product of two lists that is we multiply x1 to y1 x2 to y2 and at the end we will add all those numbers together so we have uh, map two in the list line list module that is uh, takes two lists and then um, apply a function f to the each pair uh, in the list so in this case we send a multiplication to the map two and give two lists that is map takes one head from v1 and one head from v2 and multiplies it and adds it back to the list so eventually it will return a list with these uh, multiplication results now we apply uh, addition right this is that add function we previously created if we apply addition with the uh, accumulator of zero then we will get all these uh, sums so then example if we apply product to two four three two four six and one three five then we get four what that is two times one four times three and six times five we can add all of them together okay, this is the last example in this last example we want to find a maximum of a given list so we have to consider if a list is empty uh, we throw an exception if the list is not empty right, uh, we take this head of the list and then compare with compare the list with everything from the tail and calculate the max okay. so that will uh, if you send a list of 3 10 5 that will give us 10 that will be the maximum so let's look at the execution if you send 3 10 5 to the max list so we will call fold with the head 3 and the tail of 10 and 5 so now we will apply max to uh, the accumulator in this case it's a 3 and then the head of the list right we do it recursively at the end we will have this maximum value we looked at five examples now it's your time to do these two uh, quizzes quiz one we built the sum of sub list that is we give a list of lists and then you calculate the sum of each sub list that is list of first sub the uh, sum of first sub list is six second sub list is four and the third sub list is uh, 18. so you take your time please do the problem and now you can look at this solution the solution is we apply fall to the inner list calculates uh, the sum of each list and then we apply map to this uh, entire list so that this function the function in red box will be applied to each member of the list and then we'll return uh, some of the list as a list at the end course two this can be a little bit more uh, difficult they ask this during the interviews all the time that is if we give an array and then find this uh, contiguous sub array with a maximum sum that is in this example the maximum sum will be six that is four minus one two one the result is six that is a contiguous uh, sub array in a given array with a maximum sum the solution is given here uh, we'll have a function f it uh, takes this maximum so far and the accumulator and takes the head of the list and adds 
can't just accumulate and compare it with the maximum so far and it keeps the maximum value. So if you apply that f using fold uh, to the tuple 0, 0, that is so far it is 0, uh, current maximum is 0, we take one item from the list at a time and, and add it to this current maximum and then compare it to this maximum so far and at the end it keeps the maximum value. So if you apply this uh, sub max function to the given list, it calculates 6. In summary, in this video, we looked at this high order function of fold. It is given as a uh, fold left the list module. We looked at some examples and I gave you two quizzes. Uh, please try it. Thank you.